Okay, thank you very much. I'm here to talk about impacting business as it happens. And the sub-theme here is the journey to creating the real-time data-centric enterprise. Now, I'll bet you that you all are somewhere on the spectrum. It's broad enough to accommodate pretty much anybody, right? You either are investigating what to do with big data, trying to figure out use cases, or are doing something, or you're at the other end of the extreme in which you really, you are pushing the envelope. So what I have today is four lessons to share with you from customers who are pushing the envelope, and what can you learn from them as you think about your journey. So, you know, to net it out, it turns out there's kind of two broad classes of companies, right? You're either kind of born into big data world, and you literally invented the techniques to disrupt some industry, and your entire business is based on that, or you're kind of the rest, which is, you know, you probably have a CIO or somebody telling you, by the way, your budget's lower, so figure out how to cut costs, and oh, by the way, can you also build us an innovation platform all at once, right? So I'll, I'll bet you that you're somewhere in that spectrum. Well, what are the lessons to be learned from that? The first lesson is pretty simple. It's really about trying to make your enterprise as it happens. Because we're living in a world in which, you know, trending, for instance, right? We're so interested in that, where the customer experience is now, the customer is being trained to expect that behavior. They want to be delighted instantly. And the, the key here is to shorten the data to action cycle. Now, a lot of people say, no, it's actually about data to insights. Well, insights are nice, but I think all of you are really trying to get to, how do you get from data to action? Because actually, that's what really makes the difference. So let me share with you four uh, situations and examples of people who are pushing the envelope. So Urban Airship is a good one, right? Targeted marketing, they push out 180 billion text messages per month. So sports fans, sports fans lives for as it happens, right? Starbucks, you're looking for your promotion for the croissant or whatever. It's coming from the targeted marketing behind this. It can't be about yesterday or even hours ago. It really has to be about in the moment as it happens. The next one is Machine Zone. So 40 million users, 300,000 events per second going on. The, the experience is actually what matters all the time, every minute, every moment. And they had two clusters, analytics and operational. The sharding process with classic RDBMS was not working. It was not scaling to meet the growth needs of their businesses. They swapped both of them out. And now, with real-time replication between those two, they're getting both operational and analytics in synchronized working with each other, meeting the needs of the business that they have. The last one here is Rubicon, which probably is really pushing the envelope. So 100 billion events per day. In the time it will take me to explain this, they will have probably done about 70,000 in less than a minute of figuring out what to place, what the yield might be from a placement, auctioned it off, and placed the ad. 25 million per second. So this is a business that was born digital. It is exactly about harnessing the power of in the moment and as it happens. So, you might be sitting there going, well, that's really pretty far out there. What about me? I'm just trying to figure out my use case. There's a book that just came out, brand new O'Reilly book. You can come get it, a signed copy in our booth if you'd like that has a range of use cases from where should you start to sort of intermediate to more complicated cases as you go on. So the envelope pushers are thinking about a couple of big topics. After having conquered as it happens in their businesses, they're on to how do I actually replatform the ent entire enterprise? Is there actually starting to be a more architectural approach to building this data-centric enterprise? And I would, I would summarize their learning into these few points. We are moving from an age in which apps dictated the data format to the data format now dictating the compute which is why you're starting to see things like you know, beyond MapReduce to Spark to something else that's going to keep coming, dealing with the different kinds of data. Silos are just, they can't, you can't have silos in this new world when you try to melt analytical batch and real time together. And lastly, ETL is going to go away. It's going to turn into a continuous ingestion and, and go model for, for nearly every business. That's just how it's going to turn out. So lesson number two, 
real time is not just about big and it's not just about fast, it's about big and fast, probably in one cluster, just, just from reducing complexity of how this all works out. So, you know, you, this is pretty dumbed down version, so just go with me for just a minute. There's a bunch of machines, right? You're all going to wind up with some sort of a data center operating service model if you don't have one yet, on top of which you're going to deploy data services, and on top of which you're going to have a vast array of distributed applications. Many of you are already operating big data services inside your companies to serve the needs of business users across your enterprise. Um, and others are trying to get to that model from having different kinds of clusters. So now, this leads to a, a range of problems of how do you manage this stuff. So containerization and so on are, are very hot topics today, right? And so there's a really cool project that got announced just last week uh, with MAPR and uh, Mesosphere and eBay called Project Myriad. It's an open source project, and it's a joint effort aimed at pardon the pun, literally aiming to, to manage the myriad of resources that you're going to wind up in this environment. And actually, there's a pretty cool story about how this happened. Uh, one of our engineers, a guy named Santosh, went to a hackathon where they were trying to figure out how Yarn could work in the Mesosphere environment, and he figured out how to do it in a very clean and clever way with a plug-in architecture. And everyone sort of went, hey, that's what I want. So that's how this happened. It's off to a great running start, and I think it's... It, we invite you to join that, that project and contribute to it because I think it's going to be a pretty cool thing. So where we're trying to get to is away from the complexities of the, I have my batch analytics cluster, and I have my Mongo cluster, and I have my Cassandra cluster, and sort of this world of you know, non-real-time and real-time or operational really starting to melt together. This is not futuristic. This is happening today. These are people, there are people, large companies who are implementing and living this lifestyle with the, the, the complexities of multiple clusters gone away, and by the way, doing this on a global real-time basis. And just as, a, as an example, something we introduced literally yesterday was global master table replication. So this clusters stay in sync with each other. Everyone can be a master. And, and the reason I point all this out is this is kind of the secret to how the complexity of maintaining a global consistent view in real time starts being possible. So we believe this is going to allow you to create a completely new kind of applications that, that really can change whatever business you are in. So that gets, gets us to lesson number three, which is that data agility really is a must, right? And why? Well, because the fixed data, fixed format data, is, is sort of going away and becoming the formats are going to evolve constantly. So I'd like to draw your attention to a great project, Apache project called Drill. It's all about self-service exploration, and it's really about enabling the non-developer, non-coder, BI person, line of business person in your enterprise to go s explore the data so they can figure out what their use cases might be. Many people, I find, are sort of stuck in the land of, I know I've got to do something, but I don't know what to do with it. Well, this is exactly what they need to start exploring that data without a lot of IT help. So my advice to you would be pretty simple. No matter where you start, your users, once they get confidence, are going to want more and more, and they're going to want it faster. The, the real-time end state is sort of inescapable. And by the way, as it happens, is just as much about the technology and, and sort of increasing and changing your organization's metabolic rate. And the last lesson I would leave you with is, people have found that you know, good enough is not good enough. It won't be. That, that you might think you can start in a place and go, well, that's sort of good enough for me. But as that demand for the, the real-time nature and the demands of your users change, it, it just isn't. So we are very happy to bring you these four, three use cases from envelope pushers. By the way, we're also gratified that the analyst community has ranked us the top-ranked Hadoop the top-ranked NoSQL key value data store, and the top-ranked SQL and Hadoop engine. If you haven't looked at us, I'd encourage you to come by our booth. We can, there's a lot more to talk about than I can in my nine, nine minutes this morning. We also have free online training available. We introduced this three weeks ago. It's off to a great start. 
It's exceeding our expectations. It's comprehensive. It's high quality. It can lead to certification. And of course, because it's a trade show, come by, enter, and win your GoPro, maybe. All right? Thank you. I wish you well on your journey to real time, and we're happy to help you in any way we can. Thank you.